everyone welcome back to our IELTS grammar masterclass we are continuing with our tenses today and we are looking at the future perfect and the future perfect continuous so if you have been with us for these lessons for this course then you'll know that so far we've looked at past tenses, present tenses, and now we're we're focusing on the future. So maybe you might recognise this idea of, of a perfect tense. What does that mean? Maybe you recognise the continuous element. Well, we'll look at both of these separately together today, so we can really feel confident with both of them. And then we'll do some practice at the end to focus in on your IELTS exam. Okay, so let's begin. Without further ado, let's start today with the future perfect. Firstly, what is it? What is it used for? Well, it's used for an action that will be completed by a certain point in the future. So this idea of perfect, this idea of maybe a timeline, something happening before another point and its future so this is says it in the tense what's going to happen in the future so how do we go about forming this tense then well we want to use the auxiliary verb will after the subject so subject then will then our another auxiliary verb have combined with the past participle of the main verb now you might remember the past participle from other lessons if you've been with us and we'll just cover that in a little bit if you're not so sure as well so not to worry if you're not sure what that means and we have an equation for those who prefer this sort of style we have our subject plus will plus have plus our past participle so the will reflects the future element the have and the past participle reflect this sort of perfect timeline situation, something happening before something else. Okay, so what is the past participle then? Well, it's a form of the verb and it's used in various verb tenses as well, including the perfect tenses. So you might have seen this come up with the present perfect or past perfect, for example. And how do we form this? Well, the main thing to know is that for regular verbs, we add our ed. So it looks like the past, simple past tense for regular verbs. We won't get them confused because they are different things. Past participles, not the past tense, simple past. But for the purpose of learning the future perfect, we can just remember, okay, well, it's formed as if it was the simple past. So regular verbs, walk becomes walked, and you can see that we've got that ed there. Play becomes played jump becomes jumped. So fairly straightforward with the regular verbs. Irregular verbs, on the other hand, maybe you might know where I'm going with this. Well, unfortunately, there is no specific rule for forming the past participle of irregular verbs. So unfortunately, the not so great news is that they need to be memorized, but the good news is that often they are very common verbs in general. So the likelihood of memorizing them is higher because you're using them much more. For example, go becomes gone, eat becomes eaten, sing becomes sung. So you can tell with these examples that, okay, yes, there's no real pattern, there's no rules to remember, they are quite different words in the past participle. So, and here, important to note that they are different from the simple past. So that's 
a way that you can remember that, oh, okay, they're not the simple past, they're in fact the past participle. Okay, let's switch back to our future perfect then, after now we are comfortable with that. So, for example, we can say, I will have finished my homework by 6 p.m. So, I being the subject, will, our auxiliary verb, have another auxiliary verb, finished, our past participle. Another one, they will have completed the project before the deadline. She will have visited five countries by the end of the year. So this is an interesting tense because, yes, it is in the future, but it has that perfect spin on it. So even though we're not using the past tense, it feels like there's an end to this action, even though it's in the future. There's a timeline forming here, and we can almost imagine these actions taking place over the course of the time period. Singular nouns. We could say the president will have signed the bill by tomorrow. How many presidents? Well, just the one. My friend will have bought a new car by next month. The teacher will have graded all the papers by Friday. So this is a really useful tense for adding detail, for adding timestamps, creating this idea of something happening over the course of time. Plural nouns, you can say, we will have planted the garden by the weekend. They will have cleaned the house by the time we return. The students will have submitted their assignments by Monday. So we, they, the students, plural. But nevertheless, you can see that the structure still follows the same. So we still have our will after the plural noun, our have, and then our past participle. So nothing to worry about there. It's all the same. Negatives. For both regular and irregular verbs, what do we do? Well, we want to add will not or contracted form won't. Let's see this in action. Regular verbs, I will not have finished my work by then. So I've highlighted the not here so that we can see what that is. So it's after the will but before the have. So, in the middle of our auxiliary verbs. She will not have received the package by tomorrow. They will not have solved the problem by the end of the week. There we go. So, various different ways you can use a negative, different situations. Um, also, a point here, you can use then, by then, if... It's a conversation, for example, and something that you're discussing, so there's context around it, then you can use by then or by that time because it's understood in that context. But of course, if you've not discussed the timings of something, then you can be more specific. Interrogatives. We invert the subject and the modal auxiliary verb will. So let's see this happening here. Uh, so we can ask a question like, will you have completed the task by noon? So if we wanted to then switch this back to an affirmative sentence, you simply swap the subject and will again back where they were. So you will have for example, but here we want to ask a question and we can start it with will. Will they have arrived before the ceremony begins? Will he have fixed the car by evening? Okay, so fairly simple, straightforward, asking questions in the future perfect.
that was our first tense of the day, future perfect. And now we're going to really focus on how this is different from the future perfect continuous. You might have a clue, you might recognize how they might be different. So let's look at that together now. Okay, so what is the future perfect continuous used for? Well, the difference is that it's used to express the duration of an ongoing action. But the similarity lies where it's still completed before a certain point in the future. But the focus is more on this duration, this ongoing action. So you still have the timeline element, but it's just a different focus here that's shifted to this ongoing part. Okay, so how do we form this tense then? Well, we want to use our auxiliary verbs, will and have, just like in the future perfect, but we want to add been, which is the past participle of the verb to be, combined with the present participle, which is the base form plus ing of the main verb. So there's quite a lot going on here, but let's not be overwhelmed with it. It's not so maybe daunting as it seems. I'll show you the formula. You can have your subject, plus will have, plus been, plus that present participle. Okay, maybe you remember the present participle from previous tenses, which have this continuous element. Let's just cover this now, just in case. So it is a word that's derived from a verb. It can be used as an adjective, but in this context, we're looking at it from the continuous verb tense point of view. In essence, you add the ing to the base form of the verb. That's the main thing to remember here. Okay, so we have some affirmative examples for this tense. By tomorrow, I will have been studying for five hours. So we've got a timestamp. We've got a, a timeline tomorrow. But then the focus shifts to this ongoing action of five hours of studying. And this is all in the future. They will have been working on the project all day. So again, you've got this idea of time passing in the future. Almost like a clock. You can see the clock going for the time because it's all here, you can imagine this happening. She will have been practicing the piano for two hours by 8 p.m. So in every example, we've got another event that is intercepting the event that we're talking about. So for example, tomorrow, the end of the day, 8 p.m., they're all blocks, if you like. That's when the, the ongoing action stops. And we have this idea of the timeline. Okay, singular nouns, you could say by next week. The doctor will have tr been treating patients for a decade. So 10 years in the job. The manager will have been leading the team for three years by January. He will have been managing the company for a year by the end of the month. So these are, this is a good tense to talk about sort of achievements, big things coming up, anniversaries perhaps, dates in the calendar. Plural nouns now. By the time you arrive, we will have been preparing dinner for hours. So we need that ongoing focus. If you say by the time you arrive, so that's the, the event that stops the ongoing action, we will have been preparing dinner. So if you don't have this for hours, it's an unfinished sentence. It doesn't quite make sense. If you are talking about something that's interrupting an action, like you arriving in this case, 
you need what's been happening to the build up of that arrival in order for it to to make perfect sense. They will have been discussing the plan for the entire afternoon. The employees will have been working on the project for months. So plural nouns here, we, they, the employees. But everything else stays the same, so not to worry there. Negatives then. So how do we form the negative? Well, both for regular and irregular verbs, you want to use will and then not before the have, just like with the perfect continuous. Okay, some examples then. I will not have been waiting for long by the time the bus comes. She will not have been practicing for hours by then. They will not have been studying all night. So I've highlighted the not, just like with the future perfect, you can sandwich it in between the auxiliary verbs will and have there. Okay, so how do we form questions? Well, we, just like with the future perfect, we want to invert the subject and the modal auxiliary will. Let's have a look at this in action. Will you have been working on this project for a week when the meeting happens? Will they have been living in this city for five years by then? Will she have been practicing the instrument for hours when we see her? Okay, so just like before, if you wanted to swap it back to affirmative sentences, you can swap the subject and will, and then it goes back to a, a positive sentence there. So it's quite a straightforward switch for questions. Okay, so that was our future perfect continuous and our future perfect. Let's have a short quiz just to make sure that we're comfortable with these two tenses and then we'll go to some IELTS practice. So we've got a question about future perfect to start and we need to form the right sentence. So by the time you finish your studies, how many languages? And we've got the help with you and learn, but maybe we might need to include some other words, perhaps some other auxiliary verbs. I'm giving you a clue here. Have a think at home, see what you can come up with. Do we need the past participle? Do we need the present participle? Let me show you what we can do here. So you can say by the time you finish your studies, how many languages will you have learned? So we've got our auxiliary verb that we've added, um, have and will as well, our other auxiliary verb, our subject and our past participle here, learned. Okay, now we've got the future perfect continuous example. How long, and then you study English by the time you take the proficiency test. Okay, so how, how different is this from the future perfect? Do we need to include the same auxiliary verbs? Do we need to add any other words in there? Do we need to change any of the verbs to perhaps a present or past participle? Have a think. Okay, a long one here. We can say, how long will you have been studying English by the time you take the proficiency test? And we've got a nice different type of question here. So you can, of course, start questions with will, or you can use the future perfect continuous tense in amongst uh, a different type of question, like a how question. Okay, well done if you got that correct. That was a tricky one. Okay, now we're back to the future perfect. What achievements do you think you, by the age of 30? So we've got another question. These are all IELTS type questions you might be asked. And we haven't got that much help this time. We've just got make. We need to form the future perfect. 
think about what we want to put in here. What are we missing? Any auxiliaries, any verbs? Okay, so we've got what achievements do you think you will have made? So our two, two auxiliaries, because we've already got the subject you, and then the past participle made. And then another question. This time we're switching back to the future perfect continuous. By the time, by this time next year, she, we've only got train this time, so a bit trickier, as a professional athlete for five years. Okay, so maybe now you're confident with these tenses. You might know what we need to put in there. Have a think about this one. We can say, by this time next year, she will have been training as a professional athlete for five years. Okay, there we have it. Well, I think we are ready to have a think about some IELTS questions. And for this part of the lesson, I've got some sample answers. And it's our task to find both the future perfect and the future perfect continuous. So you might be asked in the exam, can you talk about a personal goal you have for the future? Here's a sample answer. It's quite long. Don't worry, we can use our skimming and scanning skills to find these tenses. But first, I'll read it out to you. Absolutely. One of my aspirations is to become fluent in French. By the time I graduate from university, I will have been studying French for four years. I believe that by then, I will have achieved a level of proficiency that allows me to comfortably converse with native speakers. It's an exciting journey, and I'm looking forward to the day where I can confidently say that I will have accomplished this language goal. Okay, there we go. So that was all about language learning. Have a look now. See if you can spot these two tenses. I'll give you a few moments. So remember what you're looking for in terms of auxiliary verbs, participles, past or present, any other words that are important here. Okay, let me show you what we've got in this one. Okay, just a few examples. We've got, I will have been studying. That's a good phrase there. That's the future perfect continuous. And then the future perfect, I will have accomplished. So that's a nice comparison there. We've got both tenses in the same answer here. And you can use this as a nice template for your answers if you're practicing for this topic. And now we've got a writing example and the same task. We're looking for the future perfect and the future perfect continuous. So you might be asked, write an essay about the impact of technology on education in the next decade. Popular topic technology, one to be aware of here. Okay, so sample answer. Same thing, I'll read it to you and then we can have a look for the tenses. In the next decade, technology will have played a crucial role in shaping the landscape of education. By 2030, online learning platforms will have become even more sophisticated, providing students with interactive and personalised learning experiences. Additionally, educators will have been incorporating virtual reality and artificial intelligence into their teaching methods. Okay, great sample answer here. Have a look and see if you can spot any of these tenses. So skimming, scanning, which means going through quickly each line, and just looking for key information here, which is a skill that, that we want to hone for the IELTS exam. So that's also good practice. Let me show you, see if you were correct here. We've got quite a lot in this one. So technology will have played. Bonus points if you, if you know which tense that might be. That's the future perfect. Online learning platforms will have become. That's also the future perfect. 
and then educators will have been incorporating. That's the future perfect continuous. Okay, so there we have it. That was an in-depth guide to future perfect and future perfect continuous. I think both two tenses that can be confusing to students, so hopefully that has cleared up any questions you all might have. Thank you so much for coming along as always, and we'll see you next time.